What's going on YouTube? Mike here with iHeart Knives and in this video we're going to go over leathers, straps, and how to apply compounds to your straps. So, <clears throat> recently I've gotten uh, a lot of people asking about straps, asking about uh, different leathers, micron sizes and compounds, how to apply compounds and sprays to leather. Uh, it's, it's about time that I do a video to show everybody how to do it, or my, you know, my method. There's tons of ways to do it. Uh, I've done it in other videos before, but I haven't done like a true dedicated video to it, I don't think. So I'm going to do it now so I can refer people to it. Uh, just because I have so many people asking and uh, I need to tailor it so that it can apply to a lot of people. Because it kind of is up to you what you want to do. So uh, I'll put you know a bunch of different options out there and then you guys can choose. But I'll just give you, you know, my methods of doing it. Um, so let me, uh, let me give you a rundown of everything and I'll bring you closer to show you how I apply my compounds. Okay guys, so we have 16 micron CBN, uh, from Bark River, 2 micron Ken Schwartz CBN from Chef Knives to Go, 3 micron diamond, um, uh, emulsion from Chef Knives to Go, this is the Richmond one. And then we have quarter micron diamond spray from Chef Knives to Go, and it's also the Richmond diamond spray. So cowhide is pretty much the, like the most basic leather. It's also the lowest grit in silica content. It, it has, you know, the the lowest grit out of the three leathers I have here. So when you when you go to strop it, it's going to act like, let's say. I don't know, 6,000 grit. I'll just throw an arbitrary number. Uh, I don't remember exactly the, the grit levels off the top of my head, but a horse is the, the next highest. It's probably like, you know, 10, 12,000 grit, something like that. And then kangaroo is probably like, let's say 16,000. Let's say it's equivalent to one micron. I think it's actually finer than that. I think it's like, you know, you can you can use like half micron on it the silica content is still at such a number that you don't get more, uh, you know, a coarser grit from the leather than you do the compound. Uh, it's kind of hard to explain, but hopefully you guys are understanding what I'm saying. You guys are all really smart. It's just, I don't know if I'm doing a good job explaining it. So basically the cowhide, let's say this cowhide is 6,000 grit in silica content. If I go ahead and take an 8,000 grit compound and put it on this 6,000 grit leather, I'm going to get like kind of a funky stropping because the 8,000 grit compound will do the work, but then, you know, depending how much compound is on it, you'll start to pull the silica from the cowhide and, you know, you might get a 6,000 grit finish on your edge instead of the 8,000 grit that came from your compound. So that's what I mean when I was, you know, when I was talking about that. The good thing about cowhide, generally, it's a thick enough piece that if you had to reuse it, you could reuse it. Um, I don't generally, just because I find that if I take sandpaper to it, I'm gonna get contamination between the, um, between the sandpaper and the leather. So like some guys will take like vegetable oil or olive oil or um, alcohol and they'll, they'll clean like a wax compound out of the leather and then sand it. I generally don't do it. I'll just replace the piece of leather just because, you know, it's, it's not crazy expensive and uh, I'd rather not get contamination from the sandpaper. So horse hide, I find when stropping on it is harder than cow hide and it takes emulsion and sprays better than cowhide. That's just my opinion. I find that cowhide hardens up a little bit more. It also has to do with like how much oil is in the leather, like how dry the leather is when it comes 
uh, from a tannery. I try to condition my leather. The only one I don't condition is kangaroo just because kangaroo is so thin that if I condition it, it takes a really long time to dry out. And I just don't find that there's really any benefit to it. The horse hide and the cow hide I do condition before I send it out to you guys. And uh, my process of conditioning, will, you know, whether it's emulsion or spray, it, it won't make a difference. I don't use like a, a wax blend uh, conditioner or anything like that. And then last we have kangaroo. Kangaroo is the thinnest, but it's the strongest out of the three leathers. Uh, it's incredibly strong. It actually resists cuts to it fairly well. Like if you have uh, sometimes on the edge, especially at the tip, you'll get just a little piece that hangs over from a burr. And sometimes, um, you know, you'll just have like a, like where you hit one side over a little too far than the other. Uh, if you have like an uneven apex, which theoretically would be a burr, but uh, sometimes you'll get it like where it just digs in a little bit and you'll cut the leather. Kangaroo both resists and heals the best. Um, so you can continue using it without, like, you won't notice much of a difference. Whereas cowhide, if you rip it with a burr, you're going to see it. You're going you're gonna to see a really pronounced line. And it, it doesn't heal as nicely as kangaroo and horsehide. Horsehide heals closer to the kangaroo side of it. It does a good job than the horse than the the cow hide the cow hide doesn't do a great job at healing from a cup and then cow uh, kangaroo is also the finest and the one that i get the uh the hairy side is is almost always really smooth and if it's really fleshy i don't use it uh, you know i'll use it for scrap or or for like a different project if i have to and then the, the smooth side is usually really glossy. Uh, this is a, a scrap, a cutoff scrap, because I didn't like the way it looked. So that's why it's, you know, in the junk pile. Um, all right, so uh, just for the purposes of the video, I'm going to use my hands for this. Normally, when I do it, I wear gloves. Uh, but just to make it easier, you know, I'm, I'm just going to apply with, with my hand instead of uh, instead of wearing a glove you know what actually I'm gonna go finest to coarsest just so I don't get contamination so let me spray a quarter micron on the kangaroo first and this is the only one that I would put I would probably wouldn't even put quarter micron on kangaroo traditionally I, I use nano cloth but um, you know you could do it but I wouldn't put quarter micron on anything as coarse as horse hide or cow hide. Quarter micron is too is too fine in my opinion. So I did about five sprays and you can see that it's what in most of the places there's a little bit of you know, heavy heaviness right here, but it evenly distributed. And uh, this is a really fine spray. Uh, I find that you need just a little bit more than than the other companies, like the Ken Schwartz spray goes a lot farther than the Richmond spray, but it's also a lot cheaper. So and that's basically it. And then you just let it dry and then you can go ahead and use it. And that's all I do for that. Uh, I just I just spray it enough to get like a pretty even consistency and then that's it and you could choose to take like just a, a little bit of water very little bit of water and just dampen the leather before you spray it so that you don't sometimes if the leather is really dry you know you'll you'll put a lot of compound on accidentally um, but I generally don't do that I'll just spray like I did now now let me show you the difference I'll put two micron CBN emulsion on the same piece of kangaroo that I just put the quarter on. And I'll just do one drop. And you can see that one drop did about the same amount as where the quarter micron spray was. So 
the quarter micron spray is from about here over and the two micron CBN is from here to here and a my my stick strop I find that about five to six drops of emulsion will do one side and uh, and it, it lasts a pretty long time if you get the Ken Schwartz stuff I've loaded the strop probably about five times and I don't even think I'm a quarter of the way through it so you know it, it goes a pretty long way I'm going to do the same two micron on horse hide and just one drop Now you can see that on this horse hide, the two micron went way further. And the reason for that is, bec is because the horse hide, I conditioned the leather first, so it's much more supple, it's not dry. The kangaroo is, you know, a little bit more dry, but the other reason is because uh, the way that I finish the leather, you know, after I condition it, um, you can see it's really shiny. And even the, the flesh side, you can see, has a sheen to it. And there's no, uh, you know, I don't put any, like, uh, like, resiline or any waterproofers or any waxes or anything on it. Um, so, you know, that sometimes, you know, guys will put leather finishes on the leather and that's what makes it shiny. But that's not the case for this. It's just my own method. And we'll go to three micron. And I'm going to use a different finger for this, just so I don't contaminate it. And the three micron emulsion is—it's almost like mu like a thick mustard. The consistency of it. And you basically just work it around like this. And this whole area was covered and you know there is a, a thicker spot in the middle here uh, when you wear a glove I find that it helps spread it a lot better you know your finger will, will kind of push it in to one area a little bit more the glove kind of helps um, soften the blow so you don't you know push all the compound into one area of the leather so now we have you know two micron emulsion from here to the end and three micron from here to the well to just before the end of the skinny part and you can see you know the shiny bit right here where there's nothing and then there's a little shiny bit at the very end um, eh, I don't know if the camera will pick it up but you guys get the idea cowhide I'll go ahead and show you the three micron on cowhide Cowhide soaks it up the fastest. Cowhide can take a lot of oils and conditioner. Um, it just it's a it's a very dry leather. It's a very coarse leather, so you know it, it can take quite a bit of compound sometimes. Uh, and there's three micron on the cowhide, and uh, you know you can well. I don't know if it's a good comparison, but it didn't go nearly as far as on the horse. Okay, and then another thing you want to make sure you do, you've probably noticed I've been shaking these a lot. You want to make sure that you shake it really good before you use it. When you first get it from the company, it's usually dispersed, you know, very homogeneously. But I find that the Richmond sprays especially, the you know, you'll get a lot of settling at the bottom. The Ken Schwartz stuff stays homogenous, like basically for life. Um, even the Bark River, I noticed the Bark River is a 16 micron. It stays homogenous and mixed through uh, very well. You, there's, you don't have to go back and shake it often, but I'll go ahead and apply this to the cowhide and you guys will get an idea. 
the thing I love about the Bark River stuff is whatever they use as their carrier. I'm not sure if it it almost feels like a like an oily like glycerin feel to it. Whatever they use as their carrier, it stays on top really nicely. Like it it applies like a spray where you get a really fine layer, but then at the same time it has like really even coverage. Sometimes spray you get, you know, thick blots in one area and then really fine mists in the, in another area depending on the fan spray of the bottle. Um, but I find that the Bark River CBN, the, the 16 micron that I have, I mean, it, it just puts like a perfectly even layer on. So for what it's worth, I mean, for the money, this stuff this stuff's fantastic. It's as good as the Ken Schwartz stuff, um, but they offer it in different sizes too, like one ounce or two ounce bottles. And I think it's about 25 or $30 for the one ounce, but uh, the stuff lasts a long time. So even though this is a really dry leather, you know, the, the Bark River stays right on top. So this is supposed to be just a, a quick rundown of, of how to apply emulsions and sprays on, on your leathers. Um, I'll, I'll do another separate video on how to choose your leathers. But basically, uh, a rough guide is if you want coarser straps, I recommend, recommend cow and horsehide. If you want finer straps, I recommend horsehide and kangaroo. Kangaroo is for the finest, like one micron and finer, um, even two micron you can get away with. Horsehide is, is the most versatile that you can go up to. I usually go up to about one micron, but you can go all the way down to 16 micron. You know, any lower than 16 micron, I don't really feel is even worthwhile. It's equivalent of 1,000 grit. So, you know, you're going to be on the stones anyways, so... I just don't see going lower than that, but to each their own. And then cowhide, I usually go 16 micron and then maybe up to about 3 or 4 micron. But I, I usually choose horsehide over cowhide 9 times out of 10, unless there's a specific reason that I want it. Again, I hope this video helps you guys. Uh, please give it a thumbs up if you liked it or if you got something out of it. Uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit the bell to get all the notifications when I post videos, leave a comment. Um, if you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments or email me at iheartknives at yahoo.com. And that's it for this video, guys. Uh, thanks to, to Steve for, for giving out my name so much. And uh, Matt Baker, I know, has been talking a lot in one of his Ohio groups, so thank you, Matt. I really appreciate all your guys' support, and uh, I'll see you guys on the next one. Later.